Next thing that you want to do to lower the amount of time that your network needs to train is to opt for a faster uh, optimization algorithm. Again, we talked about this in the hyperparameters uh, lesson, but let's remember what the optimization is. So we said, if you have many batches like this, you feed them one by one to your network, calculate the output, calculate the error, update the weights and bias as well. Optimization exactly is that. So while you're updating your uh, network's parameters, optimizer is the thing that decides in which direction. So let's remember how that works. We have the gradient vector, right? And how we uh, calculate this gradient vector is like every element is the amount that a certain parameter affects the cost. So this is how much uh, weight one affects the cost, how much uh, bias one affects the cost, etc., etc. And using this gradient vector, we are able to see in which direction we should go. So if this is a settled looking thing that we have and uh, showing us how uh, weight one and weight two affects the error or the cost, then this will tell us, yes, you need to go this way, right? Looking at the gradient vector, we'll be able to tell that. And that's what the optimizer does. It decides which way to go. So we've been using gradient descent, but there have been some twists on top of gradient descent and you can use some other things such as using the momentum technique. You can use a Nestero accelerated gradient, uh, Adagrad, RMS prop, Atom, Natum. There are also some other ones, uh, but basically I want to touch upon what I think is the most important ones and what I think are the ones that you will use the most often. So let's go into it. So. The first one is gradient descent with momentum. What momentum does, let's talk about it um, intuitively at first. So this is what we have, right? This is how the parameter two and parameter one um, affects the cost. So if I am in this area with this dark orange area, the parameter one and parameter two values are in this dark orange area, then my cost is the highest. And as the color gets lighter, I'm going to get a better cost. If you are using gradient descent, this is what's going to happen. Let's say we're using mini batch gradient descent. So we're going to oscillate a little bit left and right, but we're going to be able to find a minima. Uh, but what's going to happen with this is while we're using uh, gradient descent, we're oscillating left and uh, up and down a little bit. Whereas where we want to go is we know in a horizontal way to our right. So that's what momentum does. It basically gets in a way a feel for which direction that you're supposed to go. It is kind of like a physics thing actually where it was originated. If you remember that bowl that I showed you, if we didn't normalize our uh, inputs, then we had a very wide bowl, right? Where the bottom is very flat. So gradient descent would go very fast down the corners, but when it, once it reaches the flat area, it's going to take, make progress very, very slowly. Whereas momentum remembers how fast we went in the first bit and keeps this momentum basically reaching the minimum. So it basically is this gravity that brings us towards the minimum. This is more on the intuitive side. So what it does basically is it uses the previous gradients that we collected, uh, that we used before. So this is one gradient, this is another gradient, right? Gradient descends uh, for us where to go. And it uses the previous gradients and says, huh, it looks like they are all trying to make progress. What they all have in common is that they're all trying to make progress in this way. So I'm going to try to make the changes more towards that way. So it pushes the uh, gradients or the change to be in a more horizontal way. And this way, as I said, we then go through plateaus faster because it remembers, okay, it was this way, we were going this way. Uh, it lowers the oscillations, as you can see. And apparently it always, nearly always converges fa faster than gradient descent. But that's no surprise, right? If you're making progress towards the, your goal, faster, you're going to reach there faster. So let's look at kind of a background a little bit of the math of how it works. So let's re remember first the plain gradient descent. Uh, how we change the parameters of a network is so let's say these are the parameters, parameter one, parameter two. Um, and like the, this is a new value, this is the old value. So how much I'm going to change my parameters is going to depend on the gradient vector 
and the learning rate. So the gradient vector is how much a certain parameter affects the cost and all of the parameters. Uh, and we multiply that with the learning rate and then we say, okay, the current weights add this change to you and you have the new, uh, new values for your weights or biases, so generally parameters. The difference between this and momentum is this. So again, we are taking into account the learning rate and the gradient vector, but we are remembering what we did before. So M is initialized as zero. This here represents the change that we did in the previous step. And this M shows us the change that we want to do now. And that M is the one that adds that is added to the parameters that we have to calculate the new value for the parameters. And um, this change, this is basically what we did in the previous step. And it includes what we did in the step before that. And that includes what we did in the step before that. So beta here is kind of like friction. It stops the effect of the previous steps a little bit. So we're not getting all of the previous steps directly uh, involved, but we multiply it with a B uh, to stop the this momentum to go kind of out of control or too, super fast. And it stops the overshooting. And again, this might look like, oh, yet another parameter that we need to tune, but basically uh, 0 0.9 is a really good value that has been used a lot and it works well. But you know, if you want, you can of course tweak it and see if it helps you. So the next one is the Nestor accelerated gradient. Um, it is again, similar to what we did with a little bit of a twist on top of it. So what it does, it, it does not calculate uh, the gradient, so the direction where we're supposed to go for where we are right now, but it calculates it for where we're supposed to be after we add the momentum. So this is what we have right now with the momentum gradient descent. Uh, we first calculate the gradient vector times the learning rate. And then from on top of that, we also have the momentum, right? With the friction uh, parameter. Well, what it does is look here now, it calculates how much the point, how much the cost would be different if we were at a further point in this graph and calculates the change that we're supposed to make on this point. So that's why it makes faster progress towards the local minima. And apparently it's generally faster than uh, momentum optimization. Uh, next one that we're supposed to, that we can use is Adagrad. Uh, I'm not going to go into details of the rest of them too much, but I will make sure to add some more details to the summary notes because, you know, at some point you don't need to know all of the technical details and math details behind all of those, but know when to use which one. Uh, Adagrad helps us correct the direction of our uh, progress towards the local, the global minimum. And these from now on, the ones that we're going to see are called adaptive uh, optimizers. And what they do is why they're called adaptive is they do something to the learning rate too. So this one specifically decays the learning rate um, and basically slows the learning progress with each epoch while we're uh, approaching the minimum. But the problem with it is that sometimes it slows it so much that it stops before reaching a good value. Uh, just to show you how the math beh works behind this one. So as you remember, we had this gradient vector. I'm going to show it like this to make it easier for more space. Um, so this guy, we had momentum in the previous one, right? And this one has something a little bit different, has this uh, S that we divide our gradient vector with. So this is again how we change the parameters. We multiply learning rate with uh, our gradient vector. But this time we divide our gradient vector by this value. So epsilon is just something that we have to not divide our gradient vector uh, by zero in case S is zero. So it's a very small value. S on the other hand is what we had in the previous run in the previous epoch. So the S from the previous epoch and the square of our gradient vector. So we're basically dividing our uh, gradient vector after we multiply it with the learning rate, we divide it 
with its square, including all the squares of the gradient vectors from the previous steps. So it's a bit confusing, but we really don't have to understand uh, what it does in the math level, but as long as we know what it does on a more intuitive way. Then we have our MS prop. Uh, it basically is eta grad, but it solves the early stopping problem that we have with eta grad. It has a decay parameter. It, you know, eta grad decays the learning rate and RMS prop decays the amount that the learning rate is decayed. So basically you don't keep lowering the learning rate uh, where it might have the risk of stopping too early, but you're decaying the, um, effect that you have on the learning rate so it doesn't stop too early and you can again tweak the parameter with which you this determine how much decay to make but again 0 0.9 is a good value to use there and what it does is you can see here we are using a beta parameter to uh, use kind of like a weighted way version of what we did before last two are atom and natum i'm not even sure if they're called this way but uh, that's how i call them uh, ATOM is a combination of momentum and RMS prop, so it has all the good things about both of them. Um, I will not even show you the mathematics behind it, it's a little bit too long, but just the important thing that you need to know is that it has four parameters, um, but most of them don't even need to be tuned. So for, for epsilon, again, is a constant that we have to not divide anything by zero, it's just a very small number. Beta 1 and beta 2 have numbers that have been tested to be or proven to be uh, working very well. So you can just use those. And learning rate is does not need to be tuned. Well, it it is good if you tune it. But when you're using ATOM, you don't even have to change the learning rate a lot. Many times uh, 0.001 is going to uh, work for you. And NATOM is basically ATOM but you add the Nestro trick. And what Nestro trick is basically looking forward and calculating your gradient there and not where you are here. So simple as that. So just some final notes on the optimizers. Uh, so if you use adaptive optimizers, as I mentioned, the ADAGRAD, RMS probe, ADAM and NADAM uh, are affecting the learning rate. That's why we call them adaptive optimizers. Uh, they are good and they often converge to a good solution. And because of this, because they manage the learning rate's value, you don't even have to tune the learning rate and they'll deal with the, the learning rate and how much progress is made uh, inside the training. So that's another plus that they have. Uh, but one of the problems they have is that sometimes they lead to a poor generalization. So your model might not generalize well to your uh, problem. Uh, we will talk about, or I will have more details on which optimizers to use uh, specifically. And we will talk about in more detail in the hands-on exercises, what settings to use when you're setting up your network initially, uh, how to change the settings, arrange an initial um, setup for your network. Uh, but for now, basically use one of the adaptive optimizers if your performance is disappointing, it's not where it is, it's not where you want it to be, then try the Nestero uh, trick and see if it works for you. But as I said, we will talk about how to set up your network, which of these optimizers to use uh, in more detail in the hands-on exercises.